and welcome to Matt's book reviews. So I looked up Matt's book corner, finally. Um, I was like, well, I actually, I was looking it up to link it to a Facebook account, uh, but my new Facebook account, but I looked it up and I was like, oh no. Somebody else whose channel name wasn't Matt's Book Corner, and that's why I was able to get the channel name and the URL. They had, like, I think it was, it said like six years ago or something, they seemed to have a series called Matt's Book Corner. And I was like, oh shit, on YouTube. So I was like, all right. And then for a while it was like, eh. Just in the sense of, like, what felt like the right way to go, like, spiritually, like, what felt like the inclination, I was thinking, like, oh, should I keep it? Matt's Book Corner anyway, given that it wasn't their channel name, and also it was years ago, and then I was I was thinking, you know what, I've had the, the inclination, actually, to have it be Matt's Book Reviews. Like, I've, I felt like just... Anyone who's sort of like gotten into spirituality, they might sort of know what I'm, they might get a sense of what I'm saying here, but similar to the Yogananda, I think it was Yogananda, it was either Yogananda or Nizagadatta or both, but I think Yogananda in Autobiography of a Yogi, he, uh, or maybe it was somebody else, I don't know, but somebody in somewhere in India at some point was said to have like just sort of walked off in a certain direction and someone's like, where are you going? And he's like, I don't know, but I'm, you know, this, I, this is the way I feel I should go. And, or this is the way I'm being told to go or whatever. And then he ended up getting to a place that, you know, then he ended up doing something and it, it seemed to have been the right thing to do essentially wherever he got to. Um, I think Yogananda had a similar thing about like getting on a train or something and either he didn't have any money or he didn't have a lot of money and he was like young and he just got on a train and then like he went wherever he was going and I think it was like partially or perhaps uh, to the point totally or perhaps at least enough to the point where he he didn't know where he was going. He didn't know where he was going. He was just following the inspiration. And I've had the inspiration to write reviews instead of to write corner when I'm writing out like Matt's book corner. So Here's the thing, there's somebody with Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews as their uh, channel name, and of course there is Mike's Book Reviews, but Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews is not Matt's Book Reviews, it's Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews, and as far as Mike's Book Reviews, if there's a Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews, and Mike does cover fantasy himself as well, but if there is a Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews, it's like, okay, well at least someone else got there with an, a name, apostrophe, and then the possessive S, and then book reviews. And not only that, but it was another M person. And not only that, it was another Matt. So it's like, I'm not even the first Matt to... I'm not even the first Matt to sort of take um, the direct format of Mike's book reviews for my own channel name. And, you know, you might say like, oh, well, you're not really taking it. It's just your name and then book reviews. And it's like, or your name and apostrophe S space book reviews, but I sort of, I think I, I feel a little more like I am taking it because before, I think before I had had the idea of having a book reviews channel, I listened to Mike's book reviews or watched it and like, so I think his, as silly as it is to take such a generic name, that's just part of it is just someone's own first name and point to that as the inspiration for your doing the same format. Uh, nevertheless, it's nevertheless. Welcome to Matt's book reviews. So we're going to do something a little fun in this episode. It's going to be, um, going to be what is it going to be it's going to be an episode oh boy <laughs> it's going to be an episode of the show um and it's going to have sort of a time limit because because uh i'm 
Oh, let's see. Hold on. Oh, okay. Hold on. I don't know if this is going to stop the recording, but... Oh, okay. So this, this has a time limit of like 12 minutes or so. How many minutes have I used up just doing basically nothing? 110. Okay. 110 minutes. So I think this one's going to be fun. Uh, I have a Dark Souls video ready to go that this is going to go over. And um, wait a second. But I'm I'm, I thought, you know, it would be cool to play No Man's Sky. And then I thought, you know, it would be cool to play No Man's Sky while recording an audio for a video I recorded for audio recording purposes for it. But I'm playing No Man's Sky instead. That would be a fairly uh, funny thing. Let's be real. It would be hilarious I mean it would, I'm not sure exactly how funny it would be but it would be funny enough but the only thing is actually oh here it is oh shit I stepped on the secret oh boy that's a great book okay there's a great video I recommend um, for probably I mean, I guess I recommend it for anyone, but uh, I think particularly uh, primed to get something out of it would be people who like books like The Secret and have looked into the law of attraction and give, you know, not without reservations maybe. I myself have uh, have sort of complex uh, – motivations surrounding the law of attraction in terms of um in terms of being like well you could you could use the law of attraction and it works it works very well i mean just uh read the secret watch the secret the movie the secret by Rhonda Byrne the movie and the book um Let's see. What are uh, you know the secret? I don't know what other books I have that even talk about manifestation. It's kind of it's kind of interesting because the massive amount of spiritual books that I bought and a, a decent amount of them I read the whole thing or at least a few of them. But <laughs> I think maybe more than that. Like I think I might have read a lot of them. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many I read, but I think there might be some more on Kindle that. Uh, I did read, but, uh, you know, it's funny because I don't know what books mention manifestation that I have. And manifestation is a big one for uh, spirituality. It's essentially the law of attraction kind of stuff, like uh, the mentalism, uh, spiritual, or rather the mentalism, natural law. And um, which can be found in the Kybalion, the book, The Kybalion by the Three Initiates. And um, let's see. And, you know. The Law of Attraction, as mentioned in The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Oh, I think Conversations with God, which I've read books two, three, and I've listened to book four being read out by a Kindle uh, narration, which, or not a Kindle. Well, it was an Amazon narration because it was um, the Alexa voice, but it was out of one of those Amazon Echoes. And if you have ebooks, like if you buy ebooks through Amazon, and maybe just have ebooks in general, I'm not sure if you could add them to your Kindle library from like already having them, like as the actual files, say you had an ebook, like that you bought directly from like the website of the author or something. Um, but whatever books you get from Amazon on ebook and ebooks do tend to be cheap. 
if you don't mind the Alexa voice, like if you're if you're just fine with it essentially, then you might be like you might get a lot of use out of the Alexa narration of your ebooks. I mean it's it's not a it's not a too obtrusive of a voice. And it's really I mean it was it was pretty incredible. I I will say though, I think maybe the book suffered a little bit. I also had uh the Alexa thing read uh what is it? I, I was tempted to say I still read you know, so I, I, I see how people could use the language of like, I read that book, even though they just listened to it. But nevertheless, it it wouldn't be accurate if and when they did. Um, but I listened to the Alexa voice or whatever voice it was from the Amazon Echo readout. Uh, there's a Stephen King short story where these, it's about this baseball player or something and it's in the Bizarre of Bad Dreams. Anyway, I had her reading out the Bizarre of Bad Dreams, but that story, I, I don't know if I ever, like, let it finish. A, because I... Oh, no, my, my, my Alexa had... Yeah, my Echo wasn't long for this world anyway. Um, so I wouldn't have finished it unless I got some kind of new Echo. But... Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. That story just didn't impress me that much. Conversations with God, book four. I think it also maybe suffered from that narration. Really, I think it might not be worth it because perhaps part of the quality of listening to an audiobook is how agreeable the narrator is or how... Well, or just it might have something to do with the texture or the style of the narration. And if it was just a robot voice narrating, like perhaps you're hearing the same words, but perhaps the stricture and the structure where you're not reading at your own pace, it's this voice reading at a strange pace. It might like mess things up. Like it might actually, you know, like your experience might be directly affected. buy it in anyway i'm uh i'm playing no man's sky right now and it's cool it's really cool but it's very uh it's very serene and there are like these dinosaur things <laughs> crawling across the snowy mountain and there's a uh, There's a ship there. Now it's a ship with a glowing red ball. And what I'm going to do is fix it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know what to do. It says broadcast or leave. It says analysis. Fresh I analysis. Fresh iteration generated. Anomaly containment prepared. And then it says broadcast or leave. I get to do broadcast or leave. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I guess I'll broadcast. Broadcast received. Traveler anomaly detected. Anomaly is compliant. Position logged. Blah, blah, blah. This is cool. Like, this is really interesting because I, I have, like, no idea what's what's going on. Oh, okay. Here we go. Now we have, I'm going to the ship. And if I can fix my ship, then I'm going to be able to fly. Oh, cool. Now I'm inside and it's very snowy outside. Atlas connection intermittent. I'm in the ship. Launch thrusters offline. Pulse engine offline. This is like Robinson Crusoe. I don't know what... Oh, uh, I... Picked something. It's repairing. Oh, I need a hermetic seal. I need to repair the hermetic seal and metal plating. 
Okay. So how do I do that? And once I can do this, then I'll be able to fly. Metal plating. Oh my god, this is going to take forever, isn't it? Oh my god, collect ferrite dust. Okay, craft metal plating. Use ferrite dust to craft it. Okay, well, at least it tells me in, like, almost amusingly small letters at the bottom of the screen, which I think is sort of a, a capitulation or just sort of an adjustment made for two or four uh, the larger TVs that people have. So they're capitulating. Where's the ferrite dust? They're capitulating. Is it in these rocks? Oh, that's just snow, I guess. Where's, where's the dust? I, I have no idea. Is this gonna get me ferret dust? No, that's oxygen. I don't need oxygen. I've got my space suit. <laughs> 